You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast and the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure to check out the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe. Awesome food, great drinks, the atmosphere to match. Follow them on their socials, Glebe Central Pub. You can find out trivia night, open mic night, wing night, you name it. They've always got something going on at the Glebe Central Pub. I'm Ross Levitan, and with me for the final time this 2023-24 postcast season, it's Brandon Pillar. Pillsy, it's a 3-1 win for the Ottawa Senators. Would hanging on be an accurate description for what we saw in the third period? Yeah, I mean, this is like uh, you're at the edge of the cliff and you've got your fingers hanging on and they're slowly slipping away. The Ottawa Senators barely hanging on here. I mean, Shabbat leaves with an injury. Chikrin had that stinger of a shot block late, and then the Sens have to be able to hold off the Boston Bruins' full-court press. And Anton Forsberg, say what you want about how the season went, but this is one of those games where he kind of stole the game here. He had a lot of massive, massive saves, especially or pretty much only in the third period as the Bruins did what they could. But the Ottawa Senators are able to come away with a 3-1 win here for the final game of the season. The shots in the third period, 23 for Boston, two for Ottawa, half of those shots on an empty net and a shorthanded goal for Artem Zub. So the train rolls on of now three consecutive games where a defenseman scores a shorthanded goal. Put that in your trivia pipes and smoke it. Mike Matheson. Then who was it in the last game? Fox. Adam Fox. Nice memory, Pilsy. I feel like I'm training you into a trivia savant slowly. I'm getting better. Yeah. You really better. are. Sends let us hear Danger Flutes one last time. And to oh. me, that's the difference between this being a successful night and not. I guess we could also mention, though, that the Habs did not win. So, regardless, the Sens pick is locked in. Either way, seventh overall, the Ottawa Senators will head into the draft lottery. I like the seven number seven. Best odds. Lucky number seven. The Good captain number wears the number Sens. seven. Yeah. I like that too, Pilsy. So the Sens win 3 1 goal scorers tonight. Yuri Smekal gets his first National Hockey League goal. How long did we spend talking about milestones heading into the last game? Well, Yuri Smekal in career game number 20 scores goal number one. Whatever happens to the pending UFA this offseason. That's a moment he will never forget. And he's the only guy that really saw it initially trickle right behind the goaltender, Linus Allmark. So credit to Yuri Smekal. Uh, obviously, season, I would say, probably didn't go the way he thought it would, yeah. coming off a 20-plus goal year in the SHL. But nice of him to finish off with the goal. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks to our guys. Always sends. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's the happiest I've seen Yuri Smekal all year. Like he, he was all smiles on the bench. Uh, it was great to see him get that goal. And that's got to be fun too. And no one else really thinks it's in, but he knew right away. He's like, yep, I just got it. I don't care what happens. I can always say I played in the NHL and I scored an NHL goal. So you love to see that for a guy like Gary Smekel. And we also can now get a photo of him smiling like Angus Crookshank was. Remember they had the two photos beside each other and Crookshank had his first goal plaque, but for Smake Out, it was just his first game. Yep. So you could see he he wanted that next step. He gets got one that plaque. tonight. Um, the Senators then got a goal and a beautiful tic-tac-toe play. Um, great kind of outlet play and Batherson found Kachuk. Kachuk, or sorry, Kachuk finds Batherson goes across to Jacob Chikrin and uh, just ripped it past Allmark. So another good goal. And um, at this point, the Sens were rolling. And this was well before that lopsided third period we're talking about. Sens actually held Boston to only three shots on goal in the first period. It was 11 3. So um, the, both goals came in the second period, but they were rolling early in this game. Yeah. The, and they were playing a really good defensive game as well. And uh, both of those goals, Ross, uh, the first one and the second, come from really good transition skating the puck up the ice the first one your smake has a really nice opportunity because branny skates the puck into the zone and passes it and then for the second goal uh pinto gets tripped up at the line 
Chikrin does a really good job of scooping that up, not letting Pinto knock him over too, like a domino effect. Then Brady gets it to bath to set up the line, and then Chikrin does a good job of moving across the ice, finding some soft ice, and then he gets the pass and he buries it too. So really good job by the Sens to carry it up the ice, find the open man, and then that guy was able to execute on, uh, I mean, Allmark's a pretty good goalie, so to be able to beat him like that for a year, Smake Allen Chikrin, that's what you want to see. I guess so. Well, once we settle down the out of town scoreboard, because I got to admit, I was all for the a mini slide here and having another regulation loss. But the Sens yeah. win, and I'm telling sure. you, once I heard Danger Flutes coming into the postcast, everything was forgiven for the Ottawa Senators in me, fan in me, just wanting to see uh, the team win, even in such a depressing setting as the Boston Bruins sends play spoiler at least once out of the last two games. They allowed the Rangers to clinch the president's trophy last night, but tonight the Ottawa senators were able to not only hold the Bruins to a loss, but before I speak at a turn, let me triple check here. The Florida Panthers now have an opportunity to still win the division. If I'm not mistaken here, they've got one game left unless it just hasn't updated. Um, no, the game is game 82. Who won yeah. the Atlantic division? We got to know this. The Florida Panthers, I think they're up four two. four minutes yeah. left. Yeah, they're going to win it. So, okay, there you go. So Brady does his brother a favor. And I'm sure at that point, he's just kind of laughing at Brady. Like yeah. of all, of all Thanks. the finals, the final nails in the coffin, the Panthers who the Sens had such a, a bit of rivalry with this year. Other than the Panthers, Sens did great against the division as, yeah. as kind of like low bar in terms of celebrating. It's that verbal meme, the guy in seventh place popping champagne. But in against the Atlantic division, the Senators did just fine. Yeah, and I mean, not many teams did well up against the Florida Panthers. So, and uh, yeah, we we appreciate all the love in the postcast chat. We're loving it here as uh, this is going to be one Grand finale, one last hurrah. And sure, you may not want the Ottawa Senators to, to win this game, but at least we can hold on to this, Ross, and uh, and milk this victory for a little while longer as the Ottawa Senators season now comes to a close. It does, but at least we have consistency among all these great citizens. It's awesome seeing the same names in the chat yep. all season long. We hope that you continue to ride with us on Locked On Senators day in, day out as we ride towards the NHL draft and all the offseason moves that will no doubt occur. But the Senators, they start the season with a loss, plenty more but before it, um, you know that shutout loss to the Rangers. But it was nice to at least see them score a goal to wrap up the season. It felt, you know, three times shut out in April. And it just kind of felt like such a slog. They get the home win, which felt good, but yep. I don't know. Yeah, it Ross, was, it was nice to see them play with the lead. Finally, we can wipe that uh, that TSN that graphic tough. off the internet, or at least it doesn't look as bad here because one minute in the whole month was in, insane. And the fact it was exactly one minute to the dot. Yeah. Brutal. Not tonight. Senators get the win 3 1. Artem Zub gets the shorthanded empty net goal. Senators win 3 1. Anton Forsberg, we'll get to it a little Ooh. bit more, but he was feisty in the third period love seeing that side of anton forsberg you want to get feisty on a saturday night you want you like live music well head on down to the glebe central pub the glebe central pub is always a part of the postcast family we love our friends at the glebe central pub and why not go have a pint a meal go hang out at the glebe central pub you can find them at 779 bank street when you head there let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. They've got awesome events all the time from live music every Saturday night to wing night on Monday, trivia on Tuesday, open mic nights on Wednesday. You can see a full list of their events, GlebeCentralPub.com. You can also go check out Arsenal on the weekend. You like your early morning footy? Go have a Caesar, go hang out, have a good time at the Glebe Central Pub. So go visit them, 779 Bank Street. Let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. It's a Glebe Central Pub, where the vibes are free at the GCP. This episode is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. 
Playoffs are right around the corner, so get ready to get in on the action. Even though the Sens aren't in the playoffs, there's going to be some awesome series. Ross and I are going to be following along the whole time on the podcast and probably have a couple shekels on FanDuel on some futures, some series, some prop bets, and just single game betting because it doesn't get any better than playoff hockey. Or maybe you want basketball, baseball's in full swing too, so head to FanDuel because right now new customers get one 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose so what are you waiting for visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win fanduel america's number one sports book welcome back to the postcast i'm ross levitan that's brandon pillar and we are here to discuss a 3-1 sends win we'll get to our send central standouts for the final time this season we'll get to wear the ottawa fire Helmet. Shout out to everyone who helps make the community safer. And Ottawa Fire, the Brave, had some good performances this year from the Ottawa Senators. And always good that they get to give away the Fire Helmet after every single win. Hilsey, but before we get to that, a great tweet. Just just scrolling through, looking to see if we get some post-game coverage, some quotes. Okay. Our guy, at Prague Senator, nice. he goes, hey. That extra point you needed, hey, Detroit? With a photo of Tim Stutzla batting the puck past James Reimer with one second left in overtime over in Sweden. So can we say that was the point that held them out of the playoffs? Yep, that's the one right there. None other out of the 164 available points in an NHL season. (laughs) That one right there was the difference. (laughs) Yeah, that oh, was. and Spiegler, I am happy about that. I did beat beat the Habs fan friend. We got $100 on the line. Did not expect it to come down to the wire. May have laughed in his face when the bet was originally proposed at even have. odds. But here I am, Victor, connoisseur, Nostradamus. I knew the Senators would finish ahead of the Habs this year in the standings. <laughs> uh, it's not much, but it's something. And we, we got to go for small victories here. It's the tiniest little thing. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, look, sure, they uh, the Sens finish ahead of them in the standings. Worse lottery odds than the Habs. But this is why there's a draft lottery. Who knows how this could end up? So I'm going to remain positive. And we know we're picking in the top 10. We've already talked about that. The lowest they can pick is ninth. So it's going to be a good pick regardless. Ross and I are going to have you guys set with 80 prospect profiles. Hopefully the Sens pick one of those players. Um, and <laughs> we're, we're firing it up for uh, draft coverage. But honestly, Ross, I, I feel good about the number seven. I know I said it, but I just, it, there's a warm feeling in me about seven. I'll do you one better. Okay. The odds for the Senators who hold the seventh best odds, 6.5. 6.5. So... Both the last numbers of the Senators' previous two captains. Nice. Back to back. Will the Senators be drafting a future captain with their 2024 first-round pick? Is it possible for the Bruins' pick to be 19th overall? Because that would be even more poetic. (laughs) I don't think it's possible. Probably not. But wait, no, they didn't win the division. Could you imagine if that comes into play here, too, if the Bruins lose in round one? Right? We could be on to something here, Pilsy. There's still games to be had, but the Senators are locked in. Seventh best odds for the draft lottery, and they're going to get a good player there, even if there's the awfully small likelihood that the Senators could move down in their draft ranking or in the draft uh, lottery, which still, date TBD is a bit annoying. I'm, I'm ready to know the date. Yeah, they need to, like, for teams, fans of teams that have been out of it for so long, like, we are clinging on to that date. We need something to circle on our calendar because we need some hope here. We we don't have any of it right now. All we know is, yeah, eventually we'll get to it. Let's just enjoy the playoffs with one day off in between, which is going to be pretty sweet. It's insane, that turnaround. Yeah, usually you get, like, four days. One I'm sure that the teams that play Thursday won't play Saturday, maybe not even Sunday, but the Leafs final game is tomorrow. So they're definitely going to be Saturday night. Saturday night. Leafs Bruins. Yeah. And then TD Garden. Florida, Tampa, that's sick too. Like uh, obviously 
you probably hope for something different, but like those are marquee matchups. They certainly are out West. We know we got Winnipeg, Colorado, even Huge. another East. So wait, the East is completely set. Yeah, of course we got the Rangers and the Capitals then. Rangers and the Capitals. Which, eh, per- I'm not that juiced about that. No, no. But it's a classic matchup. They used to play every year. It would always be the afternoon game on a Sunday on NBC back in the day. Yeah, that's fair. You no, know, like o- Ovechkin, Ryan Callahan would be out there for the Rangers. <laughs> Long fist. Yeah. Yep. And Bruce Boudreaux was always a main character in those. I feel like the, yeah. fact the Rangers won more of those than they lost. Well, yeah. Wasn't Ovechkin like a second Probably. round? hero for a long time like for a long like McKinnon time. was until yep. McKinnon snapped that hmm. you gotta you gotta take your lumps yeah is that what the Sens are doing right now the, yeah the Sens aren't even getting to a point where they can take their lumps November sucks November they gotta figure out November that's honestly whoever the head coach is I want to know their November coaching record for life yeah. Like, you know how Jacques Martin looks at the goalies and is like, huh, how do you play up against these teams in your lifetime? <laughs> coach, how do you coach up? How do you coach in November statistically? That is one of the funniest things Jacques Martin did. I agreed with a lot of what he did, but how a goalie plays against an opponent eight years ago, I don't think it really tells you what's going to happen <laughs> tomorrow night. I'd love to hear uh, Sean Tierney's discussion with Jacques on that. <laughs> no, but you see, there's the team name, and there's good numbers next to it. So that means he's good against this team. Jerseys are still the same. Sure, the teams have changed. The jerseys and cities are the same. How yeah, will that affect bounce, him? Bounces off the boards, all that. Yeah. Pelzi, should we get some Send Central standouts presented by the Glebe Central Pub? I feel like a lot of Sens fans are ready to kind of have more discussions about the offseason, but... Yeah, it would be remiss. We we get one last win this season. One final win. We have to celebrate it just the tiniest bit. Of course. We only yeah. got to do this 37 times this year. 37, Not, 41, and 4. Sends final record. I think uh, we got to get our, our guy, um, Mark, to do postcast of who got to wear the fire helmets the most because – that also comes into account. I didn't get mine till later. So I bet I'm only sitting on a couple fire helmets here. So I'm going to enjoy this one, Ross. Well, put it on and give me a Send Central standout. Nice. I was hoping I could go first. Not going to lie. All right. I wish I, I wish I could like play some like sad music in the background. You know what I mean? No, this isn't sad. This is happy. No, but it's because it's like the final it's time. Cast. It's the final <laughs> time for a little while. Yeah, we'll we'll do that at the end. This is a good. This is the standouts. We're vibing. Visor down, standout even. <laughs> Your send central standout. No, but that you're making it sound like a joke. Give me a good noise here. What do you want? Something good. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. My Sun Central standout for game 82 of 82 of the 2023-2024 Ottawa Senators season. Hashtag goalie friendly show. I'm I'm going with Anton Forsberg in this one. Uh, I really thought that he had a nice game. He came up with some massive, massive saves at the end of this one. And without him, the Ottawa Senators don't stay in this one. Like, sure, Zaka did get the one goal, but... Forzy had some 10 bell saves up against him. And our guy, John Abbott, he called it save of the year for Forsberg. McAvoy give and go with DeBrusque. And then McAvoy had that backdoor chance. But Forzy slides over nicely with a great pad save. I just thought he was dialed in on this one. And even though the Boston Bruins were really pushing at the end of the game here, he stood strong and he gave me confidence. Like, Ross, I don't know about you, but this game, I was looking back being like, this is the Forzy of two years ago before his double MCLs uh, blew out. Like he was the kind of guy that the center's defense would collapse and teams would get high danger chances and he would battle. He was battling tonight. So I wanted to make sure I gave our guy Anton Forsberg some credit here because 
Who knows what this offseason will entail for Anton Forsberg? One year left on his deal at 2.75 mil. Tonight was his 105th start as a member of the Ottawa Senators, his 51st win. And that was the Forsberg of old to the tune when he had a 917 save percentage two seasons ago, played 44 yeah. games and gave us hope for that three year extension that that season ultimately earned him. But since then, I mean, last year wasn't even going that great at the time of the injury. And then this year, it's just been a huge step back for both goaltenders that Steve Steo says he thinks that both goalies are better than their numbers show. He also told TSN's John Abbott that uh, we haven't made any decisions. Nothing's set in stone here of what's going to happen next season. But I like that Anton Forsberg pick. He did have games like that this year, though. Remember the, the Kraken shutout comes to mind right off the bat where he was unbelievable. 39 saves yeah. in early December. He had the... Um, the other perf the performance against Buffalo on New Year's Eve, 45 saves in that game, only allowed one and, goal in a big and win. He got a shutout against Chicago too, right? Yeah. Or was that Corby? Yeah. No, that was him. But hey, I mean, another another shutout. Hey, you right. you got to yep. be perfect when you have the chances. And Ross, this uh, we were talking about this the other day. Anton Forsberg's record with the Sens is 51, 44, and seven total. Now, yeah. like it's insane that he has a 500 record with this team and but out of the 44 losses how many times has he been pulled in the first 10 minutes of the game like a handful Probably over 10 yeah <laughs> that's like it's so hit or miss right now and, and it's unfortunate because yeah when he's on like he gives me a ton of confidence and that's not something i can so much say for yeah. for the other guy cuz even when the other guy's making saves it's it's still kind of questionable whether or not well you got to put that back on pilsy cuz i'm going to snap it back over to you and go grab mine cuz i got to send oh. central stand out up my sleeve i'm not going to be i'm not going to be as as down and out as i was in that four nothing game against the rangers the other night i got to stand out i got to stand uh, out i knew but... you had a stand out you you're not wearing your helmet for my stand out why not? I thought we wore it for, for just the, the vibe. No, I mean, and you're it, literally not wearing it right now. Okay, run through the stats here in the, in the game for people listening. You can download the postcast always afterwards, wherever you get your audio podcasts. All right, so my Sun Central standout presented by the Glebe Central Pub was Anton Forsberg. He had 34 saves in this one as the Bruins have 35 shots. Sends with 20 shots on goal. No power play goals for the Sens in this one, but uh, the Boston Bruins go one for two on the power play. And then this game is so – it's a tale of two cities with this game. Like the first two periods was all Ottawa Senators, and the third period was all Boston Bruins, as that's where the Corsi, I think, is really reflected with the Boston Bruins having 61% Corsi, four, five on five. So this game, the Ottawa Senators were able to hang on through the great play of Anton Forsberg and oh yeah how are you gonna get there you go you gotta go with the uh, different style headphones there Ross oh I got you no I had a button press that made everything quiet oh okay all right all right well Ross who else helped the Ottawa Senators get to this victory here who is your final send central standout of the season I'm just letting it all sink in Pilsy and and there's a couple different ways I can go. A part of me wants to go with a bit of the, the lifetime achievement award or the season long, you know, give a guy prop who's been consistent and, um, and someone who's played well, even a guy down the stretch who, who's played well. But I mean, I should also be just considering this game as a whole, because we're going to miss these individual games and battles when it's all done. Yep. And we turn the lights out on tonight's performance, but I'm going to go with Mr. Consistent and uh, Artem Zub got a rewarded with a goal Ooh. at the end, but I thought he was solid all night long. That Sanderson Zub pairing is just such a, a breath of fresh air as a team that's really struggled to find a consistency in terms of playing well in their own zone. So I thought Zub five hits tonight gets the goal and um, had a really strong performance to cap off a, a solid year where he ends up tying Chikrin who had a point tonight as well for most even strength points by a senator's defenseman who would have thought that after yeah. uh, you know he had what 10 points his first year since when he came over so i'm gonna give some love to artem zub tonight yeah he's well deserving of it and uh yeah we didn't really break down that goal so that was a great read 
Byram Zub to step up there. Soft, soft pass by Pasta to Marchant there. And then uh, Zub goes to fire it in in the neutral zone. And the ref has to jump out of the way. Like, thank God he got out of the, out of the way there. So that's a nice goal for Zub. And he's been solid all year. Um, I, I think uh, Jacob Chikrin deserves a shout out as well. If we're not going to do more standouts, I'll at least give him a shout out here. He gets a goal. Already broke down how he had a really good uh, play to position himself well to get that goal. And then blocking that shot, that one looked like it really stung. I think it got him on the side of the knee. Uh, anyone that plays hockey knows if you turn your knee and you get a puck right there, there's not always the best protection. So he was feeling that one. But Warrior comes back out, finishes the game. So Jacob Chikrin, it's been a confusing year i think is fair to say about jacob chicken here um so i want to give him some props here tonight very nice eric points out that chicken tied his career high tonight with his 41st point hot lunch gives an honorable mention a yuri smake out nice, yeah. i'm i'm convinced he's gonna get the helmet tonight it's just a feel-good yeah. story in game 82 so shout out to yuri smake out in his probably final game probably. with the organization we'll see he plays 15 minutes, one shot, one goal, two hits in tonight's game. 15 minutes is high, maybe even a season high for him. But um, once again, the Senators just playing playing with the lineup they have in front of them. And that at that point, you're probably just going to roll the bottom six as is. Ross, probably the weirdest stat of the night, as uh, our pal Eric points out here. Brady had zero hits and zero shots. I wonder how many times all year. I wonder how many times in Brady's career he's finished with zero hits, zero shots. Of course, I had Brady shots prop on FanDuel. Classic uh, mush there. But, like, that is just bizarre for a guy like Brady, especially someone that's coming off 12 shots in the game recently and 16 hits in the game recently. Spread some of those out, Brady. What are you doing? I can tell you that that's only the second time this season that Brady didn't have a single shot in a game. Yeah. Let alone hits. And in that one game, both in that one game, seven hits, no shots against Vancouver, November 9th. Crazy. He's only had, he's only had five games where he has one shot on goal. Yeah. That's the thing. That's very, very rare. So weird. Yeah. An oddity after, uh, I mean, he's been filling the stat sheet of late, especially 12 shots on Saturday, still hilarious with eight hits as well. So the captain, maybe, maybe just exhausted the senators. I mean, how many games has it been since the trade deadline? It has been like nonstop for a month and a half nonstop. Yeah, it's been, I mean, you know, we've been doing the postcast nonstop. So we're right. (laughs) We've been feeling this grind as well. That's why I wanted to give a shout out to Claude Giroux, Jacob Chikrin, and Drake Batherson. Cause like, look, I know they travel well, they're well taken care of, but man, the grind of an NHL season, I can only imagine, man, playing all 82. And now Claude Giroux is 164 for 164 since joining the Ottawa Senators. I mean, Tony Greco, shout out his trainer, doing something right. That's that's pretty unreal. Yeah. So shout out him. Pills, it's a 3-1 win tonight for the Senators in Boston. You got a final thought? I know. I know. Um, Final thought on the final post. Can we call it that? Because watch us get get Belleville into the playoffs and get all excited. If Belleville goes to the playoffs, I'm so down to do Belleville postcasts. Okay, so we can't call it. I'll buy a horse head. We'll do the horse head send central standouts. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. We need it. Um, oh man, I don't. I'm not ready for these final thoughts. I know we've had a we've had vibe casts, we've had vent casts, we've had tank casts. Honestly, and now, I feel, and now I just need your thoughts. Yeah, I feel like this season for the Sens on the ice was more crushing and more depressing than any other. However, Ross, I feel like that's really kind of galvanized the Sens community. Like we, we've all had to be there for each other. Misery loves company. Look, it didn't really show in the attendance. Like the CTC for the most part was packed like Sens fans. 19 sellouts. 
yeah, like the Sens fans are still showing they they want to support this team. And we've had a lot of, of fun and big uh, things happening to us on the show, like getting to collab with uh, Ottawa Fire and getting our own custom fire helmets, the same prop as uh, the team uses was absolutely awesome. Uh, us being able to have meth on the show a lot more being a part of the mix here. Uh, our guy Martian joining the postcast. Everybody that is frequenting in the postcast chat. We love all you guys. We couldn't do it without you. And Ross, the sponsors that we have are the best. We got to experience that when we went to Ottawa. Shawarma Palace is the goat of food in Ottawa. I mean, Dashy hooked us up big time. We love uh, Farm to Fork and the Glebe Central Pub is such a vibe as people in the postcast already know. So I feel like even though on ice it was tough, this really was a season where we're going to come out stronger the other side and the show is only going to get bigger and better. So thank you everyone for joining us. The postcast is honestly probably our our favorite part of the podcast because it doesn't take a lot of prep or stress. You, we just toss the the lights on and hit record or hit stream, I should say. And then having all you guys in the mix makes it so much fun. So that that's a very long final thought for me. Uh, but uh, I really do want everyone to know, sponsors, the people in the chat, the citizens, you, Ross, I appreciate all you guys and uh, can't wait to keep this thing going. How about keep, keep her going and uh, keep her going. Wow, how am I supposed to follow that one up? Pillsy, you do an unreal job, man. I think you only missed like six postcasts this year or something. It's an unreal Iron Man streak that you're on, and uh, we absolutely love to see it. You did a few solo ones this year too, so yep. it was awesome to see, man. You had so much energy for those as well. It's uh, yeah, it, it was great to see. Man, the, the chat was egging you on, and you're like, oh, off the glass and out tonight. You know, I'll just do 12 minutes. I look at it later on. You're at 44 minutes, yeah. just just punching air and getting into it. So absolutely yeah. unreal to see. And uh, this is just the beginning of not only the postcast, but the show as a whole. And um, it, it's just awesome to see the community around it. And look, Belleville has a huge week because we need yes. to milk some playoff games out of this season within the organization. But uh, for the Ottawa Senators, it's all over. And they finish with uh, 37 wins this season and the seventh best odds at the 2024 first overall pick a season of 37 41 and four is in the books Pillsy and i together go four and one boots on the ground in five games they need us in november next year Pillsy. they we'll might be there because uh we need to get past that hump as an organization and uh, to do that, there's going to be some changes this off season, but, um, Oh, look at this. Here's some final thoughts for me. Um, yeah. as well, we've got a great photo the Sens posting Yuri Smake. you love to see it. Um, with his puck with the it's first sharp NHL Damn, Yuri. goal. Can we get a side by side between that and his first AHL goal picture? <laughs> Definitely different vibes. That's like, uh, you know, Ross verbal meme the the bus meme where one person's on the side of the bus and it's like all sad and dark and the other person's on the other side where it's sunny and they're smiling first nhl goal first ahl goal i like it i'm, I'm gonna do it how it started how it's going yeah that's a, that's also a good one hell yeah that's awesome all right yeah let's see if uh if if we have Jacques. that would be a nice way to wrap up yeah. the post game now it's not on youtube uh just yet let's see if it's on um nope nothing yet i'm excited for the helmet video tonight who has the the helmet after the game against montreal man <laughs> you would think it's a shabby us, shabby tied us it. forgetting okay yeah shabby, shabby, shabby but it. dang yeah, it's always sad when it's always sad when someone that's not geared up has to pass the helmet out. It's just, it doesn't have that same feeling. Um, do you think that was just him tweaking what he had had previously? Tough to say, but I mean, he got rocked by McAvoy. Yeah, man. McAvoy can sneaky. And he hit Greg really hard, hard later on too. Yeah. How about Forsberg getting in the mix, getting a, getting a few punches in in that scrum? 
Yeah, well, hey, as a goalie, like, you got it in your glove and you're waiting for the whistle and someone knocks your glove up, like, you're not you're not going to like that if you're a goalie. Uh, so I don't blame Forzy for getting in the mix there at all. Uh, Ross, as we're wrapping up here, we're going to do some spins, aren't we? Oh, are we doing some spins? Yeah, I guess they're locked in a seventh, so should we start... No, because there's different. No, they're locked in seventh. So should we be starting to track every spin? Are they locked in? Does Arizona's game have an effect? No, Ottawa's locked in. You were you listening to the show? This show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I led with it. Oops. Some people want spins and some uh, don't. Oh, so, okay. My bad. I thought I thought people would want spins. I like I'm. I'm not submissive to the spins. I'm supportive of the spins now. It's it's just we don't usually do spins after win. It's the last game of the year. Spins are all we have to look forward to now. But if if people if people think that's bad vibes and that goes against tradition, that's fine. I respect that. I just I thought it could be cool. That's all. I can't find that photo of uh, Yuri Smekow with the puck. Do you think Big Belleville got it scrubbed from the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Big CAA had it wiped. <laughs> they tried to do it with the Cole Caulfield shootout attempt, but the citizens found it. I'll never forget that moment. That's that good. was that was wild. Um, so are we going to track these from now on? We don't have to track like how many of the citizens you and me individually had. Mark but I think it's a that. team. Yeah, Mark, can you please? Mark, that'd be that'd be the, sick. Keep the tracking going. We appreciate I it. I love it. I love it. Send Central Stat Tracker. Seventh overall. Okay, I should probably share share my screen if we're gonna enjoy this. Here we go. Here we go. Just a reminder: the Senators have the seventh best odds and have a six point five percent chance. Just saying, that's that's interesting. If you believe in the solar eclipse and all that, if you believe in magic. Who's spinning first? Me. Hit it. By the way, Detroit oh, locked into 15th. 15th. Tough. Detroit, 15th. Sorry. San Jose will draft first overall, which we actually... I don't hate this. We like that. Calgary jumps up to second. They get and to Montreal keep their picking pick. right ahead. They okay. get to keep their pick. Uh, it's protected 1 to 19. Which, Huge. I mean, they're going to keep it no matter what then. They're, they're not drafting outside of that. <laughs> okay, so no movement. Ottawa draft seventh. No movement at all. That's interesting. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. We don't get often. That's rare. And I was asked today online, yes, I hit reset after everyone. Can't confirm. Citizens. Hey, citizens, come on. Oh, my goodness. This Oof. Wouldn't this be something? Oof. The New Jersey Devils move up nine spots to get first overall. Seattle moves up six spots to go second. That would push Ottawa all the way down to ninth. So good job doing the spins tonight, guys. That means Ottawa got the exact worst thing that could possibly happen. The only yeah. thing worse, I guess, is if Buffalo and Detroit won the lottery. Or Montreal. Although, Although Montreal would find a way to ruin it. I can't see very well there because uh, Detroit has a 0.5% chance of winning the lottery. Imagine losing one more spin. One more spin. This is disgusting. Okay, whatever. Ottawa down one spot to eight. St. Louis jumps up 10 spots to number six. They had the longest. Dang. Dog. It's ridiculous. Sorry, guys. This said, is a bad idea. I've always said I hate the tankathon. This is good. <laughs> Bizla saying it's a good omen. We got the, yeah, true. the bad spin. Get out all the these line. out. Yep. I, I like that. Gay okay, Pilsy. Those are really good final thoughts. 3-1 the score. The Senators beat the Boston Bruins tonight on the road, and they improved to too good in the Atlantic Division. That's their official record. Too good to be dead Bang last. The banner. I guess they're not dead last because Montreal is still below them. So, Sens fans, you get to, to revel in that. Enjoy it, Sens fans. You deserve it. Um, there's six teams ahead of them in the division. Four of them made the playoffs. Tampa gets the first wild card spot. Third place goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Second to the Boston Bruins. Senators play spoiler tonight. And the Florida Panthers have won the Atlantic Division. We've won the lottery of having the best fan base going. The citizens yes. out here 
We appreciate you guys so much. Saw a lot of merch at the game. Shout out to Sens fan and QC. Love that. And um, it's going to be a very entertaining off season, I think. And we're going to have some fun content to build around. Officially got the draft off work. So we will be good to go for Viva Las Vegas at the Sphere. So we're going to have a great time and watch the Senators build out the future. I already see in the chat, everyone's talking about what goalies could be available. We'll have individual shows coming up, Pilsy, on not only each position who could be available, but also the head coaching search when that comes up. Belleville draft. Don't miss it. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available on YouTube. Subscribe. You can also log in on your family members, phones, TVs, anywhere, and subscribe there. Bilzy, would you like a final word? I know you've already given me a thought, but you want a final word to wrap up the postcast season. Just one word? Just one? No, usually you can say that as like a turn of phrase. Like, do you want to wrap it up with a word? I I just was making sure I was understanding correctly. Uh, Final words for me here. Sense fans, best in class. And let's get one final. Go Sens Go in the chat. You guys are the best. Go Sens Go. Shout out to the Glebe Central Pub. This would not be possible without the Glebe Central Pub. So go check them out at 779 Bank Street. Let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. Thank you to Joe Bell and everyone else who uh, threw a few shekels in the guitar case. Really do appreciate it after a, a great season of interacting with the fans. Not such a great season on the ice for the Ottawa Senators, but that will come. They have put things in place that going forward will hopefully systemically get better results on the ice. We'll be here every step of the way, but for Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan signing off after 76 out of 82 postcasts in a season that can only be summed up as a failure. Next season can't start soon enough. (laughs) We'll see on Locked On Senators. Late drop tomorrow. Should be mid-afternoon. We will chat with you about what went wrong throughout the year. We're going to get meth on too here sooner rather than later. Love the Go Sends Goes rolling in in the chat. And for one last time, for one more time, for old time's sake. Hit the music. Here's Danger Flutes.